It was a cold morning on September 10th, 1977, when Hamida Jandalbi was woken up by bells and whistles. Knowing his fate, guards offered him a cigarette and a glass of rum, and later he was cuffed and led through a dark corridor outside the prison courtyard where around 80 people and a wooden structure with a blade hanging were waiting. He was quickly laid down on the structure with his head poking out under the blade. The lever was pulled and seconds after, the criminal's head was in the basket. People around were gasping for air and vomiting. All of this happened 40 years ago, the same year the first Star Wars movie was released. Today, we are going to take a look at the last public guillotine execution and the history behind the National Razor. But before we get started, subscribe to our channel, press the like button, and let us know in the comments what you would like to hear about in the next video. From the beginning of its invention, the guillotine was much more than a way of ending the lives of those who didn't deserve it. It was much more like the Super Bowl in today's world. People would dress up as their favorite executioners. Some women would wear guillotine-shaped earrings. Kids would climb trees to get a better view and the workers would end their shifts early to see the event. As you might have thought, this cruel event was a very important part of the economy since every nearby restaurant or bar would get early reservations. If there was an important person to be executed, every hostel would be booked prior to these kinds of events. It was one of the only pieces of entertainment both low and high class people could enjoy in one place. Each event was spectated by journalists whose duties included rating the executioner's performance, transcribing the victim's last words, and describing the overall show. Not only would this phenomenon eliminate the criminal part of society, but also show the people what would happen to those who dared to not play by the rules. The guillotine was first introduced on October 10, 1789 in France, when Joseph Ignace Guillotin pitched his new invention to the National Assembly. Although the guillotine is famous for its use in the French Revolution, the concept is far older. The English in the 13th century had a similar structure called the Halifax gibbet, which was far larger and more powerful than the guillotine. According to diaries, the blade often wouldn't even detach the head from the body, sometimes even requiring to repeat the whole process, and after the execution, the whole area would be covered in blood and would take time to prepare for the next victim. The guillotine was more about precision and technique. The blade was positioned in a way so the head wasn't chopped, but sliced. This required less force, therefore the whole machine is much smaller, yet more efficient. Some of the public's favorite torturing and execution methods were breaking wheels, hangings, stonings, firing squads, or simply setting the victim on fire. But when crime rates increased, it took simply too much time to go through every victim in one sitting. Joseph Guillotin had a new idea, and it was a simple mechanism. At first, it consisted of a bed-like structure with a sharp and heavy blade hanging right above where the victim's neck would have to be. Later, some improvements were added, like a nearby coffin where the victim's headless body would be rolled in, a basket for the heads, and tying ropes so the victim wouldn't move or try to escape. The first person to be guillotined was Nicolas Jacques Peltier. He was a highwayman, which basically meant being a pirate except not on the water, but on land, and not with ships, but with horses. Highwaymen robbed passing by tourists in slightly remote areas and took over valuable cargo. On the night of October 14, 1791, Nicholas, with several unknown accomplices, attacked a passerby wagon in Paris. They killed one person, stole his wallet, and several securities. He was caught the same day after someone filed a complaint. The final court's decision was delayed due to the ongoing debate on the legal method of execution. Finally, the National Assembly decreed on the 23rd of March, 1792 in favor of the guillotine. The execution took place on April 25, 1792. Peltier was led to the scaffold wearing a red shirt. As predicted, the large crowd was already there waiting, eager to see the novel invention at work. The guillotine, which was also red in color, had been previously fully prepared. Charles Henry Sanson, who was the execution for the day, moved quickly. The guillotine and the victim were positioned correctly and Nicolas Peltier was decapitated. The crowd, however, was dissatisfied with the invention. They felt it was too swift and clinically effective to provide proper entertainment as compared to previous execution methods such as hanging, death by sword, or breaking at the wheel. The public even called out, bring back our wooden gallows. The National Assembly spiced things up by letting victims say their last words and after the execution, showing their lifeless faces to the crowd. The guillotine became so liked and efficient that around 10,000 heads were lost during the French Revolution. 
Some of the famous people included Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette, and Maximilien Robespierre. Although executions of important people would be dragged with speeches and long back and forths with the crowd, on average, every two minutes the lever would be pulled. Although the most common reasons of why people got executed consisted of crimes like embezzlement, theft, murder, and not obeying the orders of those in charge, a lot of people were killed for political reasons. That included activists, politicians, and even those who just shared the beliefs with the wrong people. The guillotine was a smash hit, and not long after, it was used all over the globe for many years to come. During World War II, the Nazis slaughtered around 16,000 people. Johann Reinhardt was an execution in Bavaria responsible for 3,165 detached heads. After the war, he was sentenced to one and a half years of hard labor and confiscation of 30% of his assets. One of his victims was Sophie Scholl, founder of the White Rose Anti-War Activist Group. She was convicted of high treason after having been found distributing anti-war leaflets at the University of Munich with her brother. Johann Alfred Ander was the first and last person in Sweden to be executed by guillotine, which happened on November 23, 1910, after Johann robbed an agency clerk for 6,000 Swedish kroner, nearly $20,000 in today's equivalent. On June 17, 1939, Eugene Weidman, responsible for the deaths of six wealthy tourists, was beheaded outside the prison of St. Pierre in Versailles. The event was merely advertised in the newspapers, and a small crowd had gathered that day. This endeavor was witnessed by the famous actor Sir Christopher Lee, who was 17 years old at the time. In an interview, he said they rushed Weidman to the extraordinary structure so that his feet came off the ground. His hands were tied behind and his head was held back. They set him down by the plank and punched him in the stomach so that he fell forwards onto it. A strap went over his back, the plank tilted forward. In that instant, the knife fell and I thought I would die myself. A powerful wave of howling and shrieking broke out from the crowd. Some rushed to the corpse and did not hesitate to soak handkerchiefs and scarves in the blood spread on the pavement as a souvenir. The hysterical behavior by spectators was so scandalous that the French president, Albert Le Brun, immediately banned all future public executions. Although the guillotine was still used, of course, this time not in public. After that, the guillotine was rarely used since it was reserved for the most special occasions. On July 28, 1976, a door-to-door -door salesman named Christian Renucci was executed by the guillotine after being found guilty of abducting and killing an eight-year-old girl. This made him the third to last person to be executed by this method. Almost a month later, Jerome Henry Corrine was also sliced by the National Razor after raping and drowning yet another eight-year-old girl. Then came the famous case of Hamida Jandalbi, also known as the Pimp Killer. Jandalbi was a Tunisian immigrant who worked as a landscaper. In 1971, Jandalbi lost two-thirds of his right leg after an incident with farming machinery. During his recovery, he met a girl named Elizabeth, who later became his girlfriend. The relationship took a turn when Jandalbi tried to get her into prostitution. Elizabeth filed a police report and after getting convicted, he spent 11 months in jail. Upon his release, he met two 15-year-old girls. He tried to convince them into prostitution as well. Then, on July 3, 1974, Jandalbi kidnapped Elizabeth, took her to his place, and began to violently beat her in front of the other girls. Then, he took her outside and proceeded to strangle her with a scarf. During his trial, he said the following, I put the scarf around her neck and she didn't struggle when I began to choke her. I choked her for a few minutes and then I asked for the flashlight so I could make sure she was really dead. At one point, for reasons I can't really explain, I kicked the girl's nose, but she didn't move. Four days later, a young boy discovered Elizabeth's body in a shed. In August, he tried to kidnap another girl, but this time unsuccessfully. The girl escaped and reported him to the authorities. The trial of Jandalbi dragged on for nearly four years, mainly because according to the lawyers, Jandalbi wasn't a sane man. Therefore, he should be sent to a psychiatric institution. One of his lawyers said, We have already cut off his leg. We are not also going to cut off his head. Their claims were ignored, and it was revealed that Jandalbi possessed higher than average intelligence. On February 25, 1977, Hamida Jandalbi was found guilty and sentenced to death. His lawyers appealed twice, although without any success. 
On September 10, 1977, at 4.40 a.m., Hamida Jandalbi was executed by guillotine. This was the last time the guillotine was ever used for the death sentence. If you appreciated the execution of today's topic, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you think we've missed something or got a detail wrong, please correct us in the comments below.